I do not have a good haircut. <laughs> I have what's known as a Jufro. Uh, <laughs> I can say that. Uh, and I was an ice cream man one summer. Where the last speaker was just, I, I love you, you were great. Uh, I was an ice cream man. So last night, um, Dr. G picked me up at the airport and uh, was so kind to drop me off at, at the hotel. I went, in, went home, watched SNL, my favorite show of all time, so I had to watch it, and uh, went to bed. Then I got a, woke up, I, I got a wake up call this morning, you know? Hotel. It's like an old school hotel. And the first thing I think is, oh fuck, I'm on West Coast time. I'm still tired. Um, so I have a question for you. What, was, what did you think of this morning when you got your wake-up call? How many of you thought, God, I love life? <laughs> hands. Let me see your hands. Not bad, not bad. How many of you thought, God, I just could not have any more awesome sex in my life than I do right now? <laughs> huh? Anyone? No. No? Wait, I want what she's having in the back. She, her hand went up. Okay. I'm just, I just, I woke up and, and, and who, how many of you thought, I am at my perfect weight? Come on, hands. I'm at my perfect weight. Yes, love you, wordsmith. Wordsmith, perfect weight. Whew. So I'm an oncologist. And I deal with patients every single day, every minute of every day, who are just happy to wake up. They got another dinner with their family that night. They got another dinner. But when you wake up and then you think, oh shit, I've got cancer too, right? You're like, your whole world changes when you hear that word, that C word the big C, and you're stressed out every moment. You feel like you can't eat, you can't sleep, everything hurts, you lose your hair, every muscle aches, you can't even go to the bathroom without having issues. I mean, it's like horrible, right? I wasn't just talking about my cancer patients, I was talking about me. That was me. 10 years ago, you know, speaking of 10 years, I went to med school from 92 to 2002, a decade to become an oncologist, a big bad oncologist. But it took a decade. And I was thinking, hmm, I lost myself in that decade because I joined this huge mega practice after training, you see? And I was stressing myself ill. I lost myself. I lost who I really was. I was no longer that guitar wheeling, funny, make you laugh doctor. I was burned the hell out. Just a few years in, because I was trying to be perfect. I was trying to look good all the time. I had to be the perfect oncologist. But I got help. I got better. I got better. And it wasn't the New England Journal of Medicine. It wasn't JAMA. It was Flavi. What the hell? Who's Flavi? What's Flavi, right? It's not the latest drug. It's not the latest probiotic. It's, it, it, Flavi was my patient. 85 years old, smoke like a chimney, stage four lung cancer. She lived a great life, though. She always had a dream of being a singer and a dancer in Vegas. She did that. She lost her husband in the war, but she still, still followed that dream of being a dancer and a singer. So back 10 years ago, I dragged my sorry ass into her hospital room one day, being a zombie, 
The Walking Dead, right? I wasn't myself. I wasn't even, I couldn't even be present with you. I was just worried about my own shit. I dragged my sorry ass into her hospital room. She was in the hospital, she had some chemotherapy, and she had some side effects. We had to put her in the hospital to help her get better. But I was the one who needed to get better. I walk in, I go, hey Flav, how you doing? You getting better from the chemo? She says to me, hello Dr. E, how are you today? You look pretty much like shit. Um, and I'm a little taken aback. I said, Flav, what's going on? Uh, what do you mean? She goes, look, I'm doing the chemo because my kids want me to be alive in a few months so I can go see my granddaughter's graduation, okay? But what about you? How are you today? So she's dying of lung cancer, stage four, and she gives a shit about me. She saw through that I walked in there like a zombie. Hi, Flavvy, how are you? So what did I do? I had to answer her, right? How am I? I lied. That's what I did back then, right? I was fine. I was busy. You, you know that one? I was busy and fine. Fine. Frustrated, insecure, neurotic, emotional. I was fine. I was so goddamn fine. But um, she called me out on it. She said, you look like crap. How are you going to take care of all of us if you don't take care of yourself, Dr. E? And she was right. I was walking around dead, but I did get better. She shocked me back into life. She gave me CPR, compassion, presence, and resilience. She gave that to me, and I want to give that to you today. So she asked me, she goes, how about a dance in the middle of the hospital room? I got the white coat on, the stethoscope around my neck, true story. How about a dance? What do you think about that? And I'm like, where's the cameras? Where's the reality TV show <laughs> capturing this? Because there must be on some kind of, who, what patient who's dying asks their doctor to dance in the hospital room? So I say, I'd be honored. And I take her hand, and we start dancing. And I'm like, holy shit. But this is great. And as I'm dancing, I notice something. The stress starts to alleviate. Something opens up, and this practice that was breaking me down started to break away. Like our other speaker said, there was a chip away. It started chipping away at this facade, this perfection, this, this I can't connect to you. She gave it to me. She gave me compassion. She asked about me. She had empathy for me when she was going to be around a few more months. She taught me about presence, to really be with you in such a way that you're listening, you're loving, you're open, you're light, you're connected. And resilience. Shit, I forgot that what my passion was, was writing songs with patients and loving them and bringing love and laughter to oncology. That was my mission. So she shocked me back into life. And uh, from that moment on, my burnout subsided. I came back to life. I got better. Empathy brought me back to life. So you all have a Flavvy, right? You all have a Flavvy. Every day, you have the opportunity to shock yourself back into life a little bit. When you wake up, think about a little CPR to start the day. Compassion, presence, resilience. Put down the phone. 
Meditate for a few minutes. Show yourself some compassion. Show yourself some presence. Be with the people in front of you. And then your resilience will always be there. You won't get burned out, I'll tell you that much. So it was Flavi that brought me back to life, and it was Flavi that taught me the secret of all medicine, other than hugs, which I love, by the way. But that um, illness starts with I, and wellness starts with we. That when you can connect and create a powerful partnership and be there for each other, anything's possible. Thank you. <laughs>